What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, what could it be that's hiding in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? Is this a model kit or what's in here for me? What's in the box? What's in the box? How hard is it to put together? Is it made of leather? Hey, what's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Today's episode of What's in the Box was filmed right here at Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Welcome to another Monster Hobbies What's in the Box. And this time around we're going to be looking at AMT's Vintage Police Car Kit. Now this one is no longer in production, <clears throat> so you're not going to find it at Monster Hobbies on our shelves. But I wanted to share this with you because I'm going to be building a Model T display for the Museum of the Highwood. This is a... when we do our silent movie nights, um, I want to build a 1920s style little town. And uh, most of the cars in the 20s were Model Ts. I think the ratio used to be one in every five cars on the road was a Model T. And I actually found a vintage picture from High River, Alberta in the archives. And it shows one of the streets down here. I think it's 4th Avenue or 3rd or something. But literally every car in that picture is about 1911 Model T. <laughs> so, this one is 1927. It's got the chrome grill and the bars. This is when 26 and 27 are the years that Ford they're, they're the last years of the Model T, and Ford wanted to dress it up. So these are one of the years where you get a car that's not in black. Uh, there's actually quite a few different paint colors and schemes that they had. But this vintage Model T kit shows you the features on the box. And you get the uh, high-speed Frontiac dual overhead cam conversion kit for your Model T engine. This was a real thing back in the day. You had your overhead cams and your big timing belts and your uh, exhaust. They use this in race cars. Although this is high speed pursuit uh, police engine. You have to excuse my furnace, it just keeps coming on. And then of course they give you the patrol engine with the stock motor. This was the buzz box, they had moved it off the firewall and put it on the engine. And if you look at a real one, there's actually four wires along that side that go each to each of the spark plugs. And then of course you got your wire wheels. The 27 Model T kit is the only version with wire wheels. Um, and then of course all the police goodies, the helmets. Okay, well, let's look at what's in the box. Now, oh, what's interesting about this kit a lot of the interesting things about this kit. They give you these nice police decals. They just say police in 27. And then there's white ones here too. And the star. Um, the thing that's kind of good and bad about this, AMT tends to, if the car's in 1950s, they'll put 50 in there. If it's from 1927, they'll put 27 in there. If it was from 25, they'll put 25 in there. You know, that's how they do it. I wish it kind of didn't. It would be nice to have different numbers because uh, your 27 Model T is going to be precinct 27. Whereas if you had a 25 Model T, it would be precinct 25. So you can never have the two cars join each other on the police department. But anyway, now here's the instructions from the Vintage Police Car Kit. And they give you the options for the stock Model T or the Frontiac version. And then they show you the, the three-piece wire wheels. There's how it mounts onto the frame and the springs. And there's your touring body with all the bits. 27 is when they cut the dashboard like that. The 25s, they go straight across. Now the other thing that's interesting is this is this version they give you these side curtain windows. You have the option to build the interior 
uh, and mount these side curtain windows into the up top or leave it and put the side drafts in leave these out and put the side drafts in and there's your guns and bullhorns and everything and the undercarriage and then on the back they show it getting finalized with all the different lights and bells and cool things police option put their spare tire in the back this is the only kit I've seen with the police options to it and back in the day there was a fire truck as well which has not been re-released the other thing that's neat about this is they give you the hot rod parts although they don't show it in the kit because there's been some versions of this kit that have been a, a dropped hot rod T-bucket there's a chrome drop front axle for it and yeah you can put in all the that um, Frontiac engine into your hot rod there's a flashlight for the police version and the star that goes in the center on the bar okay I, I'll be honest I started to work on this kit but that's okay there's your window curtains so I'm just going to spread it out on the bench and we'll take a quick look at it okay here is all the parts that I uh, cleaned up and whatever all spewed out all over the table here <laughs> but at any rate you can see how this this is so here's all the little police parts I'll, I'll zoom in on those in a minute here um, but your standard model T parts are all over here <coughs> One thing they give you that's extra, that was nice about this, is this. Now this seat here, you know, you're looking at this and you're going, okay, well, what is it exactly, right? This seat is a carryover part from the fire engine that um, you can't get anymore. Because sometimes, you know, when they mold these things, they're all on big metal molds. Like this could be one part of the mold, right? Uh, okay, here's case in point. This is all still on, <laughs> on the parts tree. So you got your mold and they squeeze the plastic through the mold. Well, what's happened is over the years, AMT has made like double kits and all this kind of stuff. And then they drop the double kit and they make a single kit and, out of the same molds. And they take and they'll weld in the mold itself. So imagine, you know, you're looking with this you're looking at the reverse right inside the mold let's say they didn't want these parts right so they'll take and they'll weld a blob of metal right here to cut off the plastic from squeezing into this part right but sometimes they'll remove the weld you know for whatever reason so because this seat is in there Somebody must have removed a weld to go into the fire engine part by mistake, or whatever they did. But what's nice is, if you're doing a bunch of Model Ts, you get a free seat. So you could actually make a fire truck or uh, something else, you know, pickup truck or whatever you wanted to do, using this seat. So that's kind of nice, but we'll put that to the side, because it's not part of the, the main thing that's going on here. So here you got your interior tub with the bench seat molded in and the doors. It's a very nice mold. You have to watch for mold marks on the floorboards which need to come out. Use your number 16 hobby knife and that fits so nicely inside the bucket. I glued the firewall in because I'm working on this one. I just don't know what color to paint it because it's a police car most Model T's were black, except for in these years when you had different colors. I think the fenders were still black, but the bodies were painted. But there it is on the fenders. And the other thing about the 27 Model T, it's the only one with brackets for the bumpers. Now if you want to backdate this a year, make it into a 26, you cut these off. Because they didn't have the bumpers in 26. And you use it, the wire or the wood spoke wheels from the 25 Model Ts, and that'll alter it and backdate it a year. So I put, oh, and then there's the seat and the seat back, which I've glued on. 
and that'll drop right into there. You have a nice little touring car. And of course we got our dashboard with the, the groove cut out for the steering wheel. And there's your front windshield frame. And your hood. And the inner radiator. And I glued the tank to the top, which is a separate piece. This, the rad hose goes up into that little bump there. Um, the outer part of this is chrome, and I haven't taken the chrome stuff off yet, which is okay. I'm trying to keep the chrome in the plastic bag so it's nice. Okay, here's our wire Model T wheels. And they're the two part. Top and a bottom. And you line them up. Whoops, right off camera there. There's your top and bottom, and you line up the spokes so that the outer one is going in bisecting the two inner ones at the cross. That's how you line those up. And you get your steering column and your uh, front tie rods, headlamps, horn, steering wheel, all that good stuff. But before we run out of batteries, let's take a look at the police parts. So there's your megaphone for shouting at El Capone. Okay, let's do it on the table. There's your two police hats. The rifle. A couple of batons for cracking heads. Then there's this thing. I'm not sure what that is, so I'll have to look it up. And the spotlight. And your megaphone. So those are your police parts. And for the rest of the police parts, as shown before, they're on the chrome tree. <laughs> Camera strap. So there is the police flashlight. The star. Um, I don't know if that's something. There's some spotlights here. I think that's another horn thing, or a bell. Oh, it's probably the bracket holder for that bell. Uh, and then there's a couple little spotlights here too. Try to put that bag behind there so you can see it. <laughs> and altogether, that's your components for your police car. So it should be an interesting model. You'll have to find one of these on eBay or something like that. Because I don't have any left. They're out of date a couple of years ago. At any rate, have fun with building one of these vintage Model T police cars. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you again.